All right, how with it? Let's go. What the hell was that? <laughs> you don't see. It. <laughs> okay. Just do a little sound check over here. <laughs> God. Shit, All right. Shitmonger. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 78 for Friday the 29th of April 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos and that douchebag right there is Kent. How you doing, man? Oh my god, it's Friday? Yeah, yeah it is Friday. Oh. Well, for you. Shit, this week went so damn fast. No, no, I can't, I can't, I can't agree with that. Man, well, it went super fast for me. It, this is by far my busiest week of work since I started this well, not so new job anymore. Yeah. It was so damn busy that, like, it was Monday, and now it's Friday. Yeah. That's uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, in a way. I don't know. In some ways. I mean, you missed, I, a, you missed a day off last week, so it's kind of cool that you missed a whole week this week. I mean, you're just I time missed... traveling all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, true. true. Yeah. Mm. Uh, more so, power to you. What's been going on in, in Amos land? Man, um, so I, uh, let me tell you, there's like, there's like 15 guys in my shop that are all leaving in May, to include myself. And most of them don't even have their orders yet, which means they can't out-process yet. You know, it's like the official, here, you, go, you can go out-process, you're going somewhere else kind of thing. Yeah. And I feel so sorry for them because I've had my orders probably the longest out of anybody leaving in May. And I am so far behind the power curve. Like there are so many things that I'm overdue on that I've got to try to hustle my ass through. I've got two full weeks left here and we have an exercise during one of those weeks. So we're playing oh. war, war games for one of those weeks. So, <gasps> and, and as of right now, I don't know if I'm playing in the exercise or not. I'm not on the schedule for it, but they haven't had me on schedule since like November for exercises and stuff. They just, I'm the guy that keep forgetting, which I mean, it's cool with me, but I don't know if I don't show up, it's my ass, right? So I don't know if this coming week is my last week to out process before I go play the exercise and then have to hurry up and get out get out of here. Or if I have this week I can work and next week I can finish out my out processing while they're doing the exercise and then get out of here the following week. Um, I just don't know. Like it's completely up in the air. And of course, no one wants to answer. You ask the question and nobody wants to say one way or the other because everybody's afraid of getting in trouble. But it's just, it's such bullshit, man. The bureaucracy of the military is fucking amazing. And it'd be one thing if there was positive command and control on, on all aspects, if there was a reason to have, um, you know, such petty decisions being made by, you know, the really high ups and it getting filtered down or whatever. But there's no genuine reason for it. It's just shitty. Just arbitrary. Yeah. Just arbit it, it, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm so tired of being in an Air Force where everybody's just looking out for themselves, you know? And then what they're doing is, is my supervisor is yelling at me for not looking out for my career. And I'm like, my career is almost over. I'm worried about my, my, my guys, you know? Well, why don't you volunteer for anything? Well, I don't have to volunteer. I've got them to volunteer. They went and did it so they can build their careers. My career, I'm not climbing any further on the ladder. I'm, I'm yeah. here to do whatever mission is in front of me for the time that I have left. I'm not here to find a new mission. You know, I'm not trying to climb up that ladder anymore. I can already see the, the bullshit hill from here. I don't need to go any higher. I don't need a better perspective on it. You know, um, and it, yeah. it's just it's just been so fucking annoying. No, the whole thing about about volunteering. I mean, people shouldn't volunteer because, oh, well, I want my annual report to look really good so that it will help me progress in my career so therefore i need to dedicate a certain number of hours to volunteer dude that's not uh yeah volunteer because you want to because right. it helps people because it's enriching to your life somehow not because well, it brings I, a positive got, image upon the air force right well i mean and that has some merit in itself that's that's fine but to pressure somebody using the reasoning your career will hurt if you don't do this like we've lost sight yeah 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 it's an aggravation yeah uh, sergeant muffin just realized i've got a purple purple dot on my cheek 
Um, yep. Yeah, it is known. That weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a remnant from South by Southwest. <laughs> um, yeah. I the thing that gets me is the people that that want to that want to volunteer and do that kind of stuff they're going to regardless if right. it's a if it's a career thing or not and the extra shit the arbitrary shit that they add on top of it the the council for this and the the so and so council and you know this group and that group and you know what if I really care about that shit I'll go if I don't yep. care about it why make me go I'm not going to be a contributing member I'm basically going to take up a seat and add to the cost and inconvenience. And now I'm wasting my time. I could have actually been writing this award package or, you know, the mandatory award package that I got to fucking write. You know, um, it's like yes. they pile on so much extra shit and then they wonder, well, why aren't you taking school? Motherfucker, because I, I need some free time to myself once in a while. You know? Yeah, and again, going to school is for your benefit. That's right. That's not... You, no, I'm with you. Uh, see, uh, my wife and I have had this conversation several times about you know me making the next rank or whatever, and rightly so. She wants me to progress. She wants me to make uh, E eight, you know, senior master sergeant. She she wants that and uh, your potential, sure, right? You know, and you know, it's one of those things that, that I could I could see myself doing that, but I really rather enjoy my family, and I don't want right. to sacrifice my family for the next ten years while they all grow up and move out. And then it's just me and the me and the wife. Not, not you know. Now we can go do stuff. But oh yeah, by the way, now we, the only things we're going to go do are visit the kids, because and I it, took the next ten years away from my family to go and do all these extra shits and extra activities and volunteer for this and volunteer for that and make this happen. And and let, let's face it, part of part of the overall scheme once you get into the senior NCO tier of getting promoted is your social skills and your ability to. Um, to uh, yeah to, to network is you know network and talk to people and get your name out there and be known and be part of certain circles and uh no like fuck yeah, that that's the kind of the irony of it once you reach a certain rank the focus becomes on making more rank rather oh. than progressing the mission helping the people that are uh you know that you work with and for yep. and yeah, it Yeah, that, that, no, completely. And and that's why I I'm not interested in making any more rank. Like I'm I make it well known. It's not like I hide it. I am I'm done. I, I reached the E seven, which is where I wanted to when I got in. That's yep. as far as I needed to go. You know, and then especially this last year, man, I've had I've uh I don't wanna say that I've I am I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame this on someone else. I'm not gonna, you know, make this an external factor. I've not handled situations well enough to make me think that I deserve the next rank anyway. Yeah. You know, certain things that I've, I've come up against with uh, um, a parody of supervision and uh, how to handle certain situations. And, you know, it just, there's certain things uh, a, a person more career focused would have been way better at doing that than I am. I was doing good just to hold my tongue and not, you know, hurt someone's fucking feelings and crush their soul with, with my, with, with my words, you know, and, and that's it. I have, I, we, we talked about the Peter principle, like in an early episode, like episode, uh, oh. I don't know, like alpha or, or beta one or something like that. Uh, it's like probably beta four. Or something. No, no. Was... I, I literally just listened to it. It was like beta, beta one or something. Um, oh, what? yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, I've reached that level. I've reached that level of potential in the Air Force. Like this, this career path has run its course for me. I'm ready to do what I can and not give a shit about myself, which is supposed to be the appeal of making chief of making E9 is, oh, well, you've already done your career and now you can worry about your people. Why wait that long? Right. The people that make chief have already been in like 26, 27 years. We, we had one. So one yesterday, um, well, you know, the, the ceremony, the, the, the the promotion ceremony uh, had just crossed twenty two years and put on chief. Yeah, and that's that's super fast. Mm. That's that's yeah. yeah. That's somebody that's looking out for their career when they put on their first stripe. Right, and and that's fine if that's you. You know, I I wasn't. It, it took me until uh, about my fourth stripe to figure out that uh, you know <laughs> I need no, to stop th being think, a shitbag. <laughs> oh, 
No, the, I think the, the Peter Principle played out for me as a tech sergeant. Like that was where, like I think my peak was as a tech sergeant. I got to the point where I wanted to be a master sergeant, but I wanted to be the master sergeant that I knew when I was an airman, mm -hmm. not what master sergeants are now. Right. And I re I didn't really realize that until I actually had master sergeant. Art. No, 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 no. Actually, you know when it happened? It was in a production meeting in an AMU the day after I found out that I made master and, <laughs> and I was told that I now owe money for some bullshit that like all senior NCOs are required to give money for. Yeah. Like what, what, what is this? Like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you're a senior NCO now. And then I was like, you know, I never gave the money cause I was like, well, I'm still a fucking tech sergeant. So <laughs> I, you know, I, and right after I made, after, right after I made master, I tried that, that whole, let's, let's get into this. Let's do the, the, let's go to the meetings and, you know, and all the crap. Yeah. Top three, all that shit, man. I was, I was all about it. And it lasted about two meetings when I realized they're not actually doing anything. Right. Exactly. They're, 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 they're talking about shit. Officer positions like, like president, vice president, secretary, and uh, treasurer, or whatever the fuck it is, mm. and just so that they can put that in some bullet in a an awards package or something like that, so it will make them look better for their next stripe. Yep. But what are we doing here? Why are we wasting all this time to accomplish nothing? Yep. I don't, yeah. Yeah. That's it, I, I learned the politics of this whole shit <clears throat> before I even had master sergeant on mm -hmm. and that's when i started counting down to 20 years and zero months and zero days and zero <laughs> yep i i just i yeah. couldn't like i uh, the, the thought of going through all the political shit that you have to go through and you can say people say it's not political you can make it without being no no, no it's all political and that's the damn problem yeah, well, okay, I can see where some people would say it's not political, but it is definitely a game. And if you play by the rules of the game, which you could definitely argue that in a large part it's political. So, so uh, would you, but go ahead. for example, the, the uh, course fourteen, uh, the top three shit, the uh, you, uh, I don't know, senior NCO academy and all the crap, right? The shit that we don't want to fucking do. Some people enjoy that, and they don't see it as a hindrance. It's something that they want to do, and right. they just naturally progress through the ranks because they're doing the thing. They're playing by the rules of the game. Right. And the thing, like people like me and you, that shit does not appeal to us. We would rather be leading our people, training our troops on how to do their tasks, mm -hmm. helping people with, you know, become becoming better writers, better communicators, or just just perfecting their their uh, core tasks, their duty, their their primary function for the mission of of the Air Force. Right. That's what we want to do, but that's not that's not the the rules of the game of promotion. And so that's, that's problem wise. So in the game of the Air Force, you sew on or you retire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm yeah. Please. I'm not sewing on. Yeah. <laughs> GTFO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so, speaking of things that I want to do in my off time, I've been building this computer. I wasn't supposed to get start getting parts until next week. I started getting them on Wednesday, which is great. I got the mother. I got all the everything except for the motherboard and CPU on Wednesday. I got the motherboard on Thursday. I started putting it together on Friday. And the only thing I'm missing now is the CPU. It should be here Monday if if the trend holds true. Um, one thing about the so so the USPS, United States Postal Service. Let me tell you about the USPS. You can track where your mail is on the USPS website if you have the little tracking number. It's great. It's awesome. Yeah. Be able to see exactly when it got somewhere, where it went, and how many steps it took to get to you and when it's going to be delivered. It's amazing. It's awesome for every service that uses it except for the USPS. 
because the United States Postal Service can't get their heads out of their asses, and it doesn't show all the scans, it doesn't show all the locations, and it sure as hell is not very fast at all. Right, especially when you put APOs into so, the equation. So everything that comes to Korea has to go through Chicago. Everything. Chicago's Chicago. the main hub. Okay. So three out of my five shipments went from California to Chicago, left Chicago, quote unquote, left, you know, departed the facility in, in Chicago, and yeah. arrived at, at, well, one of them arrived in Incheon, the, you know, the major airport here, like two days later. Well, I don't know where the fuck they flew, but this is not a two-day flight. So, okay, <laughs> fine. Sure, you know, maybe there's some lag in them scanning it in or whatever else. They went the other way. Yeah, yeah something on a, on a biplane. <laughs> and uh, so we, 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 the, the stuff hits Incheon. I receive it the next, like, basically the next day. It's the next day or the day after that, depending on how they route the mail or whatever, you know, what time it gets in. The other two parts that came from California never went through Incheon, and they only ever arrived at Chicago. And suddenly they're in my inbox, <laughs> my mailbox. Okay, okay, fine, fine. I had one of them leave Tennessee and go from Tennessee directly to Incheon and then go to the local you know, the military post office and then come to mine. It shows all those steps, but didn't show anything between Tennessee and, and Korea. The CPU, first of all, they shipped it like four days late. We, yeah. Okay, fine. You know, it's not like I paid for extra, extra handling, shipping, or whatever else, because I couldn't. I mean, I would have, but APO didn't have that availability. You basically get it right. when you get it. Yep. Um, and APO Double. is, uh, is was it, armed uh, American Post Office or something like that? Uh, I don't remember what APO stands for. Yep. But anyway, um, so it, it's basically <laughs> military mail coming to uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen. And I say I don't like adding Marines to that, because Marines are just sailors with more muscle and less tolerance for gay people um okay so uh so the package army that uh, army post office army post office okay fine that that works sure shit whatever and um <laughs> they the the cpu shipped late fine it shipped from nashau uh nashau nashu new hampshire well this immediately sp started a, a few things for me because if you remember my Ritual Misery t-shirts to include the one that you're wearing right now. I mean, my, my version of the one that you're wearing right now went from somewhere, it went from Vegas and then to Nashau and sat there for three days before it finally came down to Abilene so I could wear it and pick it up the day before I came down to South by Southwest, which is why I wanted the shirts when I did. So it took an extra like five days because of that. Well, now my processor leaves the Amazon warehouse in New Hampshire, goes to Nishau and sits there for three more days, even after it was shipped or after it was, it was shipped three days late. So it is now in Chicago as of yesterday. It's, <laughs> AKA Osan Air Base. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, no, yeah. No. So it, yeah. if the pattern holds true, it's been five days after arriving at Chicago. Cause that's the only thing consistent on, on all these, except for one package. Uh, is the arrival date at, at Chicago five days later? I get it, which is actually four because of the time zone shift or whatever. So I should get my CPU on Monday, which is still four days earlier than I expected my parts to come in. So I'm still yeah, ahead. Last week, yeah, last week you made the prediction two weeks. Yes. So it's it's still four days ahead of when I thought I would get them. But now I've got this fucking agonizing weekend of everything sitting there ready to go put together. All I need to do is slap the damn processor on it, hook the cooler up and be done with it and start cranking away. Yep. But I can't do it this weekend. I, I can't do it. I, I have verified the direction of the fans. That is as far as I've gotten with, with anything on the, you know, it, uh, this is the worst part. Like, if any other piece besides the motherboard and the RAM were missing, I could actually do something. It's got integrated graphics. I don't need the graphics card right away. I don't need the Blu-ray drive right away. Um, the, I, I bought the case here. What else did I get? I mean, you know, all the other things that I got for it, everything that's going in it, I didn't need except for the motherboard, the RAM, and the processor, which were the last three things to arrive. <laughs> 
Of like, course. Damn it, you know. What? Um, Go their way. <laughs> yeah, it. I, it. I guess it's it's probably just my fault for not ordering the computer a week earlier, but whatever, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at with it. It's all ready to go. It's I just need the, the fucking processor. <laughs> and so uh, I had a start to my week. Oh yeah, yeah. So just just a little preview, real quick. What is that? What is that? What is it? Oh no, no not the bees! Not the bees! Okay, so it wasn't quite that bad, uh, but that was a little clip from the wonderful movie called Oh, What the Hell? Uh, I've never seen Oh, What the Hell? Who's in that? I don't know, but I'm having a tech failure over here. Okay, so uh, the wonderful movie called The Wicker Man it was a 2006 movie starring <laughs> Nicolas Cage. <gasps> oh, it's so good. It's got, a, I think, a 3.6 on IMDb. It's complete fucking trash of a movie. Uh, but there's an, there's a scene, a much memed scene in that movie where this, uh, this cult puts this like cage like thing, uh, cage on cage's head, um, and dump bees into it. Mm. And he starts screaming, not the bees, not the bees. Okay. And, and, and how does that collate to your week? So Saturday yeah, so Saturday, Steph and I were out in the yard, just you know, doing just general yard work, weeding, um, cleaning up uh, the the peaches and uh, you know just you know dog poop and just whatever yard work needed to be done. And we get to this one corner of our yard, and yeah, you know, there's a couple bees, and then you get a little further, and there's like. Ten times as many bees. You take another step, and there's ten times more than. Okay, like, first of all, why the fuck are you walking into the bees? Like, as soon as I realized that there's more bees, the closer I got, I'd be out of there. Oh no, no, no! See, like me in particular, I don't like five or six bees. Does not bother me. If you don't fuck with them, they're not going to sting you. Ninety nine. Yeah, so one bee, I'm out of there. A few bees doesn't bother me, but when you start seeing them by the dozens. Yeah, where are they coming from? Right. So, in the corner of my yard, there's a, a box. It's like a, a control box for my sprinkler system for the yard mm -hmm. that I haven't used in over a year now. In fact, I think the the last time I was in that box was last spring, like the beginning of last spring. Okay. Uh, yeah, bees were pouring in and out of the the little access hole so that you can remove the cover to get into it mm -hmm. oh shit that's kind of a problem so my first thought was let's go get the bug spray go over there spray it that was a bad idea that just pissed them off and i had to run away uh <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't get the yard work done um instead i tracked down a local beekeeper and said, hey. <laughs> he said hey come pick up my poison resilient bees <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well the thing i've probably killed three or four bees oh but the one, calm down <laughs> but well you know how bees, you know how bees are when they are in trouble or being attacked or whatever they release a, a pheromone that alerts every you know the rest of the hive saying mm. hey something's fucking with us and that just excited all the other bees and that's that's why i had to run away uh so i called the beekeeper and he was like oh yeah man you know what's your address I'll, I'll i'll come by i can't come by right now he's he's uh, actually a firefighter as well and he was on shift so he's like i'll, I'll be off shift tomorrow morning at seven and i can come by you know basically anytime tomorrow um but he said it's either got to be like early in the morning like as soon as i get off work or we got to wait till the evening, evening. yeah B because so of I'm their general activity level uh right exactly because be you know bees are calm when it's dark is mm -hmm. basically what it is so I was like, well, I'm not going to get up at 7 a.m. on a Sunday because I'm planning on having a beer or three or seven uh, tonight. So 7 o'clock is just out of the fucking question for Sunday yeah. morning. You can come by at like, 7 o'clock, but you're on your own. <laughs> yeah, you can come by at 7 p.m. That'd be great, uh, which is what he did, actually. He came by Sunday early evening. Right, uh, I guess it was around 6.30, 7 o'clock. And he comes out there. He's like, okay, yeah, I see it. Cool. 
uh, let me start getting my my gear ready, you know. So he suited up. He had uh, he made a little um, like a small fire in a in a uh, can that that creates smoke for the because smoke calms bees and stuff. So he got that all set up, and he had this cool uh, like a it was like a vacuum cleaner that was mounted on a bucket. Uh, and then he had his his bee box that was that's used for transplanting a hive, right? So we were thinking there might be, you know, just a couple trays worth of honeycomb because, I mean, we just now noticed these bees. They couldn't have been in there that long. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, they've been there for at least a season. So they probably moved in there shortly after I was in that box a year ago. The entire compartment of where all of the, like the valves and the uh, wiring and stuff like that for my sprinkler system, they had taken over that entire thing there was more honeycomb in there than he even had room for in his b box which is it's a fairly large box that yeah so oh my god because when he started to where he started to worry was when he was trying to pull the lid off and he couldn't get it off he had to get a a pry bar and a hammer to get the box open he's like he's like uh this might be a problem. I think these bees might have been in here a while. I was like, oh shit, what? How is it possible that we haven't noticed this? Yeah, he pries that thing open and the it's just like a massive colony. Thousands of bees take flight. It's like holy shit. No. But amazing. Yeah, well, these were really calm bees. He was telling me about the last couple extractions that he did where the bees were just pissed off. Like, if you were anywhere in the vicinity, like, they were coming after you. They were just mean bees. Some killer these, bees, man. Yeah, well, these bees, he said that, that they had a lot of European DNA. I don't know. I don't know a lot about different species of bees. <laughs> um, but he said that their their European blood or their European DNA uh, made them a calmer species. Because, like, he would he was in there fucking with their, their hive. Mm-hmm. And kind of just chilling just i mean they're flying all around him and stuff but they're not they're not attacking uh, him I, I guess we're moving jim yeah that's basically what it was so it, it took him a couple of hours eh, probably just over an hour actually maybe up to an hour and a half to get get this whole thing uh taken out he gave us uh, a large chunk of honeycomb that we've got fresh honey and i was actually going to have uh, one of the containers of our honey i was going to have it in here for show and tell and i completely forgot to bring it in here um, but it's so good. Uh, the but anyhow the the next day because he said that there's so much honey coated in the in the box for the next two or three days we're gonna have a whole lot of bees coming to visit to eat up all the honey stuff. Well, so the next day there was like this mass of hundreds, possibly even thousands of bees just like clumping together in the box. And and tell me you got a picture of this. Um, I do actually. That's um, yeah. Uh, I'll, you know what? What I might include a. I'll upload them and I'll include a link in the show notes to a couple of the pictures I took. Um, so I called him back. The I, I guess it was Monday, Monday or Tuesday. I called him back and I was like, I sent him a picture that I took of these bees just mm-hmm. clustered there. I was like, uh, does it look to you like they're moving back in? He's like, ooh yeah, I'm gonna come back. So he came back when he got out of shift at 7 a.m. I think it was Tuesday. It was either Tuesday or Wednesday morning. So he came back, uh, vacuumed up these bees, and he got the vast majority of them. But there was still, like that night, there was probably a couple hundred bees, again, clustered there. And I, I let him know, and he was like, he's like, dude, just fucking kill those. He's like, don't feel too bad about it. Bees live like 30 days or something. These bees, their their colony is relocated, and they obviously haven't taken the hint and found the new location for the hive. So they're basically just marking time until they die anyway. So just just take care of them. I was like, okay, cool. So yesterday, <laughs> yeah, yesterday I went out, and I basically emptied half of a can of insecticide into this box and holy shit dude all these bees like instantly took flight 
and just made this massive swarm. Did they right. make, did they make a well, sign up there that says like "fuck you," you know, like like in well, the well, Disney they, cartoons? They, they formed a giant fly swatter and started chasing. <laughs> so, so it was more Mickey Mouse than Disney. Got it? Yes. Or uh, more, Bugs Bunny. Yeah. So Bugs Bunny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but That's so, awesome. the, so they were swarming like fucking mad all over the backyard, flying over the house, going even into the front yard, just just angry as hell for about five minutes. And then there were no more bees. <laughs> I got uh, them all. <laughs> that's, that's so sad. Uh, so um, but, so, so you, now you have your backyard back. Yes. Yes. So now we can finish our yard work. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, weekend. Pretty much. Yeah, but that's, that's going to be one of the things that happens this weekend. Is oh, man. Weeding and all of that. Sounds awesome. <laughs> Ugh, I don't, I don't, I don't do bees. Like I, I would have gave up after the second one. You know, and the the thing is, like, I, bees. Like I said in the beginning, the bees don't really bother me unless there's a bunch of them being aggressive. Mm -hmm. I, you know, they, they don't bother me. Uh, but watching this beekeeper work, like, made me more interested in bees. Mm -hmm. And I could see, like, you know, in a, a later stage of my life, maybe keeping bees. It's. The, dude, fresh honey is so good. <laughs> mm. I can see doing it. Bees, bees don't bother me at all. Not a chance I will ever <laughs> keep bees. Like, I, I would rather be a, 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 a SWAT team, you know, shit, water, and trash team than to keep <laughs> bees. Like, it, there's no way I, no. I could do that. It'd be like, that'd be like me working on, on uh, radio towers in the middle of a cornfield that are like 1,500 feet high. Yeah, yeah. There's no way. Like, I'm not going to do that. That is something I will never do. I will never be on top of one of those towers alive. Like, you, I, 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 I maybe halfway up there, I would just die and someone would carry me the rest of the way. But there's no way I'm making it up there alive of my so own free not, will. You're not going to move back to Indiana and work on one of the, no. the windmill? No. <laughs> not a chance. Oh, man. There's so many. Dude, how long has it been since you've been in Indiana? Like, in the, the northwest Indiana area? back home um right before i came to kunsan last time so 2010 2011 oh so well you probably saw you saw the wind farms yep start up at least the alien wind farms yep yeah dude, oh my god there's so many yeah. windmills like but, for, as far as the eye can see you can see hundreds of them it's yep. crazy and they all blink at the same time in unison red lights at night when you're driving down the road and don't know they're there it's just this red light blinking on the other side of the road and you're like what the fuck? and 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 sort of hypnotic which is <laughs> really not what you want which is not what you want on 352 <laughs> <laughs> driving north northwest out of lafayette on 352 and you're heading into into benton county and all you see is blue or is red red blinking lights in unison on both sides and yeah it, yeah it's that slow blink too yeah it's, uh, it's not Kind of flat, yeah. It's oh. no, it's like it's like on for a second, off for a second, on for yeah. It's it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you, then in the morning you wake up and you you know brush your teeth and, and get the uh, the beer out of your breath and you look outside <laughs> and you're like, where are all these wind farms come from? <laughs> it, it, like it doesn't even match up in your mind <laughs> until you see it at dusk when the lights are on and you can see the windmills. That's that's when you finally realize, oh oh, that's what that shit was. Okay. Yeah, you're like, man, I just thought it was a whole lot of radio towers. Yeah, damn. Oh. All right, man, since we're talking about bees, you want to go ahead and uh, do this? So I thought it would be appropriate, since I, I knew I was going to talk at length about bees, that I would just go ahead and keep the theme going with a TED Talk about bees. Wait, so wait, wait. When, since when do we have themes on this show? Yeah, you know, it happens by this accident. This is bullshit. So, Times. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, I watched Anand Varma. I'm so glad you had to say that, not me. <laughs> the first 21 days of a bee's life. Super interesting talk. This guy is a photographer, and he took on a project that was, uh, I believe it was commissioned by a university study uh, that was trying to go ahead and guess, figure out why the bees are dying. Mm -hmm. that's, there's half the TED talks on their, in their database are about why bees are dying. Yeah. So thousands of ideas, no solutions. 
<laughs> right, exactly. So one of the main reasons for the decline in bee populations is a parasite. And it is called Varroa destructor. Oh, okay, what first a- of all, sounding name, w- w- fucking badass name. That's all. That's it can be. Right. Om- it can be ominous all at once. But that's like that's some shit out of some some awesome comic book right there, man. That's yeah. This is like like Greek tragedy proportions here. Like some sort of mythological beast called the Varroa Destructor. It sounds like something that the Ghostbusters would Yes, have yes, I was just thinking. <laughs> Varroa Destructor. Uh, but when, this thing is, when someone asks you if you're a bee, you say no. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this thing is, is super tiny. It is, it's the size, roughly the size of the head of a pen. And bees become infected with these things. And basically what it does, it, it mutates their DNA to uh, where the, you know, they can't survive um, at, you know, for any length of time, mm-hmm. uh, any significant length of time. So um, it's very destructive, obviously. And the vast majority of the bee population is infected with these things. So he was taking uh, video – well – Actually, I'm not sure if it was if it was like slow video, like a, what do you call that? Um, long exposure. Well, actually, I'm, I'm mixing two things. It was you, either you, you it, really are. <laughs> well, you know when you can take video, but it's it's, it's a very slow speed record. slow motion video, like high speed camera. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. Well, anyhow, so he he took so video. You, you mentioned mentioned four methods of videography, and all of them are completely different from the others, and we have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so, basically, what it, what it comes down to is 21 days of a bee's life. the The first 21 days, from the time it hatches from the egg until 21 days later, mm-hmm. he this entire sequence in 60 seconds. So, whatever method so time he lapse. used to, uh, yeah. So. It was really super cool to see these larvae emerge from the eggs and develop, et cetera, et cetera, basically into adult bees. Mm-hmm. The crazy thing was seeing the mites appear and sucking the blood of these baby bees was kind of creepy. <laughs> it was odd, to say the least. Uh, but it, it, it was a super interesting talk and had really cool visual of you know, the, the aforementioned video method i guess and he also had a live small orchestra that was playing music over the the video which was kind of a nice touch okay but it it was a really neat yeah it was a really neat video uh i learned some things and i this one that gets a way high thumbs up from me which is finally late (laughs) right (laughs) we've been on a rash of fuck it lately yeah 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 exactly Jeez. Very cool. And that was, uh, uh, well, you say the name. We've already done it once. Yeah. Anand Varma, the first 21 days of a bee's life. And, of course, we'll have a link to that in our show notes. Yep, absolutely. Oh, man. Um, so Game of Thrones is back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I've, so, so we're going to talk about the episode, but I, I need to mention real quick, Armed Forces Network, AFN. Yep. This is a... A, a a television distribution method network, I guess, that takes American television shows, American uh, 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 mainline television shows, not really the the minor shows and stuff like that, but the really really popular shows. Right, and like shows prime time television, prime yeah. time American television. Yep, and uh, and and ESPN, they have like sports channels, everything else. I think there's like two sports channels, and there's. I don't know, four or five different main channels. And then you got prime, which is like all movies or whatever. And you got, so it's, it's essentially like 10 or 12 channels that they fill it with content from the United States. They, they get the, the copies from the, from the media companies that are producing it. They cut out all the commercials. There's no advertisement commercials intentionally played. Sometimes they slip in a little bit because it's all, you know, it's all done by computer or whatever. 
and then they give it to us to watch while we're overseas for military members. Uh, if you live on base, it's not even an issue. It's really easy to pick up. You just plug it, in, plug your phone, your your TV into the wall, and bloop, there it is. If you live off base, you can get a converter, which will catch the over-the-air signals and descramble them or whatever. Um, and it's available pretty much worldwide. Like most deployed locations, even have at least some basic AFN functionality, so you can kind of keep up on shows. Certain channels, the like, think I don't remember which one it was, but there there are a certain certain channels will show the same shows three times in a row on an eight hour cycle. So to show all the primetime shows and then all the primetime shows and then all the primetime shows and then the next day it'll start out with a new batch of of shows and it's basically a day behind the the state. So if a, like uh, Friends came out on Thursday, it would come out on Friday on AFN. Yeah, um, I remember. When we were living in Okinawa, it was two weeks behind for well, everything. That wasn't just AFN, though. That was actually going through the cable company who was – the AFN channels were live. So you could watch it live if, if AFN was going to show it, and that's when we had AFN East and West. And I don't think sports was even out at that time. Um, but they had AFN Movie, AFN East, and AFN West, and you could try to catch it on one of those. But then the cable company on base was actually taking the video signals with commercials, the full-fledged video signal from the States, and they would put it out two weeks after it came out in the States. And it was an identical replica of the show. Like, it showed the same commercial as everything else. To, for the example, we got to see the Daytona uh, race. The, the Dale Earnhardt's last Daytona race was live on AFN. And we got hmm. to watch it, and it, you know, Dale, uh, Dale Earnhardt died on the track or whatever. Two weeks later, I went ahead and made a recording of that because it came on the Fox channel on the cable on base. So I have an actual copy of the race in its full form um, because I know my mom is a huge Dale Earnhardt fan and everything else. So um, I guess that's not really a way to celebrate your fandom by someone sending you the death. A anyway. <laughs> um, that's sad. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it <laughs> took me 20 years to realize that probably wasn't a very good move. Um, <laughs> I cast. <laughs> not, yeah, not to mention it's on VHS and nobody can watch it anymore anyway. Uh, so, But we have these channels, and, and what they do is it's it's PC TV. Like, everything they put out there is, is very uh, family-friendly unless it comes on at, like, 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning. Then they'll they'll put movies on there that are actually the full fledged movie. Like it won't blurp, blurp out the cuss words or anything else. If boobies flash across the screen, it allows it. It's like just during that that very specific time frame though. Like you you won't see um, Game of Thrones for example. You won't see that on at six o'clock in the evening. It, it's not going to happen. Right. Um, well, Game of Thrones came out last week, and AFN came on and said we're going to show it on Friday. That was that was the advertisement. That's what was on TV. Game of Thrones returning to AFN this Friday at nine or whatever, you know? Yeah. Okay. So I'm sitting there and Game of Thrones is actually coming on. This is the day before Game of Thrones premieres. It was like sat Sunday morning in my time, so it was like Saturday night y'all time. And I'm on there and I decided to put on there, you know, and hashtag AFN on it. I was like, Yeah, you know, AFN's gonna gonna wait until next week before they show Game of Thrones. What you know, a man do, must do, or a man must find a way, right? And you yeah. replied, okay. And then AFN listens at AFN listens replied, with it's it's been delayed to Saturday or whatever. A man must wait one more day. And then yeah. so I th I thought okay that's kind of funny. All right, that sucks. It's going to be delayed another day. It's coming on on Sat Sunday, of course, uh, or Saturday. Uh, I was already watching it. You know, I found my alternate methods. Um, so the <laughs> like two days later. I, I don't know if there was like a huge outcry because they delayed it one day or whatever, but they were like, they replied to my tweet again and said, um, this week it's on Saturday. From now on, it'll show up on Mondays. Yep. So which, you'll get episode one and then two days later you get episode two. Right. But we'll get episode, and very importantly, we'll get episode two the day, like hours after it premieres on HBO. Yep. Yep. yep so yep. Cause it comes on here at like 11 o'clock in the morning on HBO. Um, so we'll, we'll get it at 10 o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night or whatever. So it'll be literally less than half a day later. We'll be able to be able to watch it here. Of course I work night shift and it comes on at 11 o'clock there and I can find other ways to, to acquire the video 
um, mm-hmm. uh, within minutes of it ending. So I will do that so that I'm not sitting at work wondering if I'm going to get, a, you know, are the planes going to be flying when it's on so I can watch it, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I thought that was very, very fun and, and interesting. And I just love... People bitch about Facebook. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm blah, 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 blah. Here's my life story told another way because I need some attention. Or they, they bitch about Twitter like, oh, I'm eating a, another bite of my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yum. Oh, look at that. I'm having a Dorito. You know, people. That, I don't follow those people on Twitter. Exactly. Like you have a choice. Um, <laughs> but this is like the third time that I have hashtagged just mentioned somebody in a product or whatever else and yep. the company or a a fairly fairly high up representative has responded back and yep. none of the times that i expect it to you know um like pocket cast they came back to me and and you know we're making jokes and shit and that was cool and then afn i i'm not saying that i'm the reason afn changed it to the other day because of my smart ass remarks <laughs> but just the fact that they did and they took the time to to tweet back just to put it out there. This right. is the true power of Twitter. This is what it's for. This is why you can have a direct link to people you are not directly, um, uh, that aren't in your circles of influence. You can see yeah. the glow of other circles of influence and they can still affect each other. It's amazing. It's great. Yeah, exactly. And I, one of the things that fascinates me, I, I follow POTUS on Twitter. And every, every now and then he will do uh, basically an AMA, ask me anything right, sort of thing for like, you know, 30 minutes or whatever. And it is amazing to me that anybody, of course, you know, thousands of people are tweeting at him and he's only got time to pick like six of them or something. <laughs> of but, course. But it's amazing that just Joe Schmo, nobody can tweet something to the president of the United States and get a direct response like that's a possible thing and it's right. and it's like what you're saying representatives of companies celebrities you know your favorite musician you know people that you would never have a chance to meet let alone have an actual conversation with you can get a direct response from that person now yeah it's tw- twitter is yeah I, I was a late comer <laughs> to the game of twitter but man it's i am such a fan and advocate of twitter now yeah, so, I, I I love it. So, um, on the Game of Thrones, man, I, I, I know you watched it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I watched it probably, I think I started watching it about an hour after it originally posted to HBO Now. Hmm. Um, so, here's my take. I'm going to give you my take real quick, and I'm sure you'll be able to expand upon it. Sure, sure. On the days leading up to, the, well, the 50 days leading up to Game of Thrones premiering for season six, they replayed all the, ep- the previous episodes, one by one, the, or, yeah, the previous 50 episodes all the way up to, the, to that day. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch any of those. I've already seen them, but I didn't watch them again. I sure. did, however, scour YouTube and find some you know, reminder videos, some just to catch you up on blah, 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 blah. You know, Here, Here's what's going on so far in Game of Thrones. You know, here's a recap of season five and this and that and everything else. Okay, cool. It reminded me of a few major points and kind of got me back in the mood of things and I was ready to go. And then I watched episode one of season six and I was like, fuck, this is a recap episode. Like, I didn't need to watch all those because this did it for me. Like, it reintroduced all the main the main storylines, not some of the minor ones, but all the main ones, and gave you just a little a little taste of where each one of them's going. You know, yes, it, it, it was the appetizer before the meal. It was, it That's was not, exactly. it was not a course yeah. of the meal. It was just the pre meal. Yeah. So yeah, I was going to address that. So when I started the episode, I sat down, pushed play, and I thought I was immediately going to hear the iconic theme song. No, 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 no. That wouldn't come for like another five minutes. Mm-hmm. Cause first I had to watch all of HBO's little ads and things Watch these cool, awesome new shows that we're putting on. Like, dude, I'm already a subscriber. Like, get the fuck off my screen. <laughs> what, what, what is this, YouTube. fucking YouTube? Come on. <laughs> give, me, give me the shit. <laughs> right. But at least YouTube is playing ads for something that someone paid them to do. So maybe you would go fucking get 
Switch to Geico or something? Oh my God, how awesome would it be if you were watching a video on YouTube and a YouTube advertisement came up on that video telling you to go to YouTube to watch more videos like this? That's what <laughs> that's what HBO is doing. <laughs> exactly. I had a full 60 seconds of HBO ads about be a subscriber to HBO. Uh, this is how I'm watching this. Yeah, I'm, I, see, I think I think certain times and certain showings they are actually showing it for free, so they might might not have been distinguishing between the two. But if, even that's, if that's the case, it's still really shitty. Yeah. So all right, so, whatever. That's a minute. It was just minor annoyance, whatever. But then the recap begins. Previously on Game of Thrones, whatever. And it's like <laughs> it's like a two minute thing about you know what's come before recapping especially you know season five the the big cliffhangers and Mm -hmm. and plot twists that happened towards the end of of uh season five um they went they went further back than that but they it was all like you know things that built to the climaxes of season five right which okay that's that's fine i guess uh, but then finally, we get the, you know, the... Right, the, the HBO logo. Yeah, and then, boom, the the Game of Thrones theme song. It's just, it's, oh, I, like, I get happy every time I hear that sound. Mm. Uh, that was fantastic. And then I had about 60 minutes of... Recap. recap. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and that's... that's kind of an unfair assessment because it was basically not necessarily recap but it was the characters reacting to the situations of the climax of season five so in volleyball when when (laughs) someone tries to spike against you you have a block like you know you try to block it so it goes back down on the other side of the net okay fine if not you've got the the dig the the Pop and the spike, right? Or the dig, the serving. The, you know, there's three names for it anyway. Bump, set, spike. Yes, yes. Bump, set, spike. Um, I really felt like this episode was the bump. Oh, absolutely. This was all bump. Like everything in here was 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 build up. There was nothing actually concluded, um, except except maybe uh, maybe. Maybe I'm going to go ahead and go spoiler here. So if you haven't watched it and you want to watch it, then you should have fucking watched it. Um, when, when, yeah, when, when Sansa is finally away, when she's finally broken free. And yeah. in that scene with uh, with uh, uh, Gwendolyn Christie, uh, what the hell's her name in the show? Brienne of Tarth. Yeah, yeah. Um, that scene was the only one that actually progressed the story, I thought. Everything else was just kind of... It was either a carryover from before or setting up something later. That was the one genuine transition yeah. during the episode. But even even still, that's kind of set up to because not much happened other than Brienne's like, "Oh, here I am." Pledging right, right, you. true. But emotionally, like, sure, yes. She, yes. If okay, Sansa, right. if Sansa had been running the entire episode, in my mind, she's still gonna get stuck by the fucking Ramsay. You know, she's. But now. Now that she's with Brienne, like the emotional transition has happened. I no longer feel she's under under the Bolton curse. She's actually, you know, she's one step beyond that. Now she's ready for progression. She's made it out of whatever situation into another situation. Whereas yeah, the, all the other storylines were just basically very slow, you know. Yeah, well, th- th- to elaborate on your, you know, bump analogy, I think the primary example of that was when uh, Jamie and Cersei were talking. Uh, they were talking about a certain death to not, not quite spoil it for people. Well, no, fuck it. This happened in season five to discuss <laughs> their daughter's death. Um, it was a kind of a sad, emotional sort of moment, especially yeah. for Cersei. Because the, one, like, the one human quality, the one human quality that Cersei has is her love for her children. Yep. That's like the only human quality that she has. She's basically a bitch monster other than that. Yep. Um, but like I generally feel bad for her when something bad happens to one of her children and she reacts to that. Like I genuinely feel bad for her. And yep. this, was, of course, was one of those moments. Uh, but right at the end, 
Jamie told her that the only thing that matters is us and the people that have wronged us are going to pay. And then Cersei has a response basically echoing what he said. Mm. And that was the bump saying that if you have fucked with the Lannisters, get ready because shit's coming. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Um, there, there were quite a few scenes. I don't think, uh, I don't think, Oh, that's awesome. Well, isn't that just a peach? Now that was uh that was thrilling. <laughs> um did you, did you hear the end of my monologue? I did. Okay, good. Cuz I was getting ready to start my own. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> Sound biting 101. Yeah. Um I don't think Tyrion's story I, I, there wasn't a whole lot of progression there. It was really transitory. Um Jorah Mormont and Daenerys and what's what's his name the uh, the dude that Daenerys actually likes. Um that uh that that was transitionary i thought the scene where where she breaks out into uh she starts speaking dothraki and then they had the little little jokes on the side and stuff like that i thought that scene was was awesome I, I, that was that was one of those humorous scenes that you only typically see with uh with uh Tyrion. um mm -hmm. and i thought that was that was great uh, i've heard a lot of people not like that and i thought it was i thought it was i thought it was paced well and i thought it was written well and it fit right where it was. Sure. Like, I, yeah, there, there wasn't anything about the episode that I personally didn't enjoy. Um, it, but, it, yeah, I can see where people could criticize that. Uh, some people, I think, would probably say it's a little drawn out, maybe a little too fan servicey, and not really progressing things that much. Uh, but, no, I'm with, I'm with you on that. It was, it was humorous, and it, was, it, it showed Daenerys's... Uh, well, first her vulnerability, and then her power, and then back to her vulnerability yep. because of the ultimate, basically the fate that they decided for her. Yeah, it was it was great because the entire time they're talking about her and everything else, she's keeping quiet and she's she's observing and she's angry, but she's trying to hide it, and you can kind of see that. Uh -huh. And then when um, when uh, the the call goes to goes to basically assault her. Yeah, and that's not what it is in their in their it's raping cult. time. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 time to pay your dues for the food you've been eating. Um, <laughs> yeah, when you know, then she speaks up, and the that surprise on everybody's face, and she's basically like, "Here it is. Here are the rules. Screw you. This is not what how it happens." Right. And then there's this moment where where they acquiesce. They're like, "Okay, yeah, no, you're right. You're yep, yep, you're right." Oh, by the way. <laughs> and that look of defiant strength that she had wisps away into the solemn replanning stage. Like she's now going back through her mind. Like, okay, um, that that, that the, those last thirty pages of this novel are trash. Rewrite this chapter. We got we're going we're going with Plan R. Like we have we, you know we got to find something new here. Plan D for dragon. Yeah, <laughs> but I thought it was great because um, there are a lot of great actors. On the show, there, I don't know that there are any poor actors. You know, nobody that's, that's, that's not holding their weight as far as the acting goes. Some I sure. enjoy more than others, but um, I think they're, for the most part, they're all doing really great as far as acting goes. Really owning and stepping into their character. Yep. Um, a lot of the scenes that have had Daenerys in it, uh, Amelia Clark, they've yes. been, I don't want to say they were underacted, but... They, her acting just didn't grab me a whole lot. You know, it, it was kind of the, a lot of it was the same emotion, even when, like, oh, no, no, uh, Khaleesi, you're wrong about this, and the blah, blah, blah. Then it's just, it's still the same. Okay, I'm still Khaleesi, and I'm still going to do this. Mm -hmm. This is the really the first time that I saw Amelia Clark really like she owned that situation. You could see it in her face. She was. You know, from the from the anger to the defiance to the the sudden oh shit, yeah, yeah. You know, you could you could just read it. Her body language, her acting, and the way she spoke, her voice, and things. It 
it was I thought it was great. I thought it was just, just this one one little scene that just capped off like that's why Amelia Clark's in the fucking role right there. She yeah. nailed it. So it, um yeah. that's how I felt about it. Yeah. No, I you know, in in you and I actually both right after we watched the episode were kind of bitching about how not a whole lot happened. But yeah. there were real real gems of scenes like that. Um, just sprinkled throughout. Um, I already mentioned the Jamie and Cersei. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the whole Tyrion thing, you, like you said, didn't really go anywhere. But right. there were some nice moments between him and, and uh, Varys that was just, like, I, I love both of those characters so much. And, the, and like you said, those actors own their roles. Yep. It's just really cool to, to listen to them and watch them interact with each other. So not a whole lot happened to those scenes, but it was just a neat little, you know, maybe two minute dialogue scene that was just kind of neat. Yep. Um, so the whole Jon Snow thing, I don't think anything major really happened there. We, we don't really need to talk about that too much. I mean, he's he's dead. Like we've we've, yeah, bo we've both got our theories, but. Well, yeah, and, and, and the whole thing about it, like I, I, I knew at the end of season five and from uh, the end of book five, which both leave Jon Snow exactly in the same place, mm -hmm. he's dead. He's fucking dead. Like that, that's really never been a question in my mind. However, his body's still there, and this is Westeros where there's red priests that can bring people back to life. There's uh, the White Walkers that reanimate corpses. There's, uh, you know, it's so many different ways where Jon Snow may reemerge in some form or another. Right. Um, you know, maybe, maybe he warged into, uh, into know. ghost or something. Yeah. I, I don't think ghost because ghost was, um, specifically you know. they showed ghosts red eyes during this episode, which, told me that he didn't warg into ghosts because anytime anytime someone wargs into an animal their eyes gloss over like like theirs do right you exactly. know what i mean it's like this you know so, and they showed they showed ghosts red eyes so yeah, and he was like so pissed and angry and trying to get to john that you know john wouldn't be going to like sniff his own corpse right you know? <laughs> so, um, so so i don't think that happened but uh you know all these different things that that could still happen so we don't really know the ultimate fate of Jon Snow yet, but right. he is in fact dead. <laughs> I, I, I I don't think I don't think the character Jon Snow will speak another word in the books or on the show. Okay. Okay. As in, if he does come back, it'll be under a different name or or something. I, I don't think Kit Har Kit Harrington is done with the show. I think he's got plenty left. Okay. Um, but the 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 name Jon Snow, that character, I don't think they're coming back. I think it's I I think it'll be some other some other name or I mean it could be John Stark, you know. I mean it, or it could be John Targaryen. I mean it, it could be some other name, but Jon Snow is gone. Yeah, uh maybe. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, whatever happens with him and his character, I, I think we're going to learn this season. So and, in the and the the, the, <laughs> the, the the red priestess. Yes. Okay. First of all, there's more red priestesses roaming around. Like we've we've seen a couple of them. We've seen a red priest. Um, yep. Like there's there's more and more of them popping up and being visible. And of course, they were probably there the entire time, but they're the showrunners are giving us more of a hint of it, and I think that's pretty interesting. But when she when she takes off the uh, the emerald, um, or the uh, the ruby necklace or whatever, and turns into this old, old old woman, I like I knew it was coming, but I didn't know it'd play out like it did. I didn't just the scene of her her taking it off and then just going and crawling into bed. And it, she looks so defeated at that moment. Not not just not just the physical change of going from a. a, a middle-aged you know 20s 30s woman to 70s 80s she looks around like 40 ish i think okay but either way somewhere in there um to an elderly woman that change itself was was dramatic of course yeah but the look on the older ladies the older actress's face it could have been a young woman with prosthetics, whatever. But the look on her face and then her body language as she walks back to the bed and crawls into the bed was just defeat. It yeah, wasn't, 
replanning like the one with uh, with Daenerys or anything else. It was just defeat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, absolutely. But I, I really think that that was the same actress. Yeah. I think just Melisandre. Yes, that's exactly because the the look in the eyes like it looked like her. Yep. Um, just you know, uh, more like loose her skin and more of a gray tone and things like that right uh, uh, you know of course the gray hair and all that but it's yeah I think it was the same the same but yeah I'm yeah absolute defeat just complete just she was done yep so it's gonna be and that was the final scene of the episode and I, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see where they take her character after this um, because this is one of those instances in the books where that's not how this is going in the books. She's right. not hanging out at Winterfell, or uh, I'm sorry, not Winterfell. Castle but Black. Castle Black. Um, Speaking of Winterfell, I just want to get this across. Yeah. There are certain periods of time, like the the showrunners, or maybe just my imagination, are kind of using um, uh, what, what's the the name of the Bolton stronghold? Um, um it's like Dark Keep or something like that. It, um. The, the dread fort dread fort there there is visually no distinction between winterfell and dread fort so interiorly w- right but yeah. they, they don't show the outside shots enough like right. I, right. I just from watching the show i don't know if if uh sansa jumped off the walls of winterfell or the walls of dread fort like it's not clear enough in the story where they're at when that happens I know it's mentioned, but it's not made very clear. And in my mind, at least watching the show, I know in the books it's easy because they talk about certain things at Winterfell that sure, sure. Or that you're not going to see anywhere else. But in the show, Winterfell and Dreadfort are used; they're they're the same. It, it's, that, yeah, and that's that's interesting because I'm wondering if if there's visual cues or clues or cues, I guess, um, that maybe I'm picking up. That I'm not. That you're not because you. I don't think you've read in the books. No, the, I, I haven't. The court. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe I know those locations well enough from the books that I pick up on the things that aren't obvious to people that hadn't read. Right. Um, but to me, like it's never been a question to me where whether they were at the Dread Fort or at Winterfell. And maybe that's. But you know, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe it's just because of where they're at in the story. Because they don't go from the Dreadfort to Winterfell back to the Dreadfort. Once they're at Winterfell, that's where they are. See, I don't remember them ever going to, to Winterfell. I remember... Oh. Because, well, once they get to Winterfell, though, that's, you know, that's where they're at. They don't... Right. They had not gone back. Right. So, and maybe that's what... Because I, I, uh, I know Stannis went to attack him... Yes. ...at Winterfell. Mm-hmm. But at least at that point in my mind, I thought that Reek and Sansa were at Dreadfort. So, mm. and I think that, I, I don't know, I, that's, that might just be me, but that might be something that, uh, I mean, that's definitely something I'll be paying attention to to see how they place it from that point on. But in my mind, Dreadfort and Winterfell are visually, in the style of the show, identical. Mm. So, they're interchangeable. It's, yeah, interesting. So, all right, man. Um, anything else? That pretty much covers what I had, man. It's definitely been a show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we talked about Sergeant Muffin a little bit during the pre-show. Sergeant Muffin has once again enabled music videos on DiamondClub.tv for Yay. people to go there and watch and vote up or down, and you can submit your own. There's different mu- different music channels that you can watch. It all streams off of YouTube, so you know that's it's all that way. It's a really cool feature. I've actually been using it quite a bit in between live shows when I'm sitting on my computer working on other stuff. I'll just pop that up on there and catch some good stuff. And most of what's on there is really good. There's a couple on there that I've had to vote down just because they don't necessarily fit on the channel that they were on. You know, um, some satire videos on the main channel, and then there's some some rock videos that were on the uh, on the comedy channel. You know, just kind of people not quite paying attention where they're posting them in. But um, other than that, man, it's, it's been pretty awesome, and I really enjoy it. And Sergeant Muffin's doing a kick-ass job. He's doing a lot of work behind the scenes on DiamondClub.tv. And making yep. shows like this possible, and plenty of other stuff going on too. So, he has a Patreon. Uh, he does. I believe it's 
patreon.com slash sergeant muffin i think is what it is yep i uh, think so yeah i i definitely support him on patreon and i think others should as well yep um but yeah make sure you do that and today my time tomorrow your time is the last day to hat the system at hat.t2t2.eu to go and vote for your favorite Diamond Club shows uh, and, and get those going on. So make sure you do that if you haven't done it already. You can only do it once per per ad email address. Um, if you want to figure out a way to get more email addresses, that's all up to you. But um, that's there. So make sure you support the rest of DiamondClub.tv, uh, all the great yep. shows we have on there. And that, uh, you know, it's, it's just an awesome community. We're so thankful to be a part of it. Um, but that's, uh, that's pretty much our show, man. Where can people find you? At RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Or if you like beer and you like reading about beer, go to ratebeer.com. Look up username Del Noche to read my reviews. Awesome. Uh, you can find me at Ethan Kane on Twitter. You can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Uh, find all of our stuff on ritualmisery.com. You can go to the subreddit, uh, ritualmisery.reddit.com, and submit ideas for the show or stories or anything else or just comments or anything. And uh, <laughs> if, if you're listening this far on the show, do us a favor. Go ahead and hit your Twitter and put in there hashtag still in beta. Just yes. to let us know that you're watching and that we're getting some interaction because we got some, some really fun things planned, but we need, uh, need a little bit more re- interaction. And once we change time slots, because we're going to be changing when I get up to Alaska. <laughs> that will help a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, that'll, that'll help with, uh, with uh, uh, chat room and everything else. But just go ahead and start doing that now. Hit that uh, hashtag still in beta. And uh, we'll, we'll get in touch with you with, with some fun ideas we have going on and some things uh, things we have planned. So, and of course, you can call and leave us a voicemail at 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. And uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Great stuff over there at incomptech.com. For you, for me, for Kent, and for anybody out there, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> and so do we. And that's a sh- that's a, that's a that's a shat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a shit. That's a shat. <laughs>